<laughs> all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. In honor of almost Halloween, I decided it would be appropriate if I dressed up like a cat. You know, it's a couple more weeks to go. Embrace the spirit of it all. I do this even when it's not Halloween. But I digress. Welcome back to another episode of Martina's Midnight Munchies. As you can see, it's it's very midnight, although technically in Japan, I guess this counts as past midnight. So that kind of makes sense. What? Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys how to make crepes. I've taken over my mom's kitchen, but before I start today, I feel like I need to just like add a couple touches here and there. Some like little tiny objects that might make me feel a little bit more inspired to cook. So I'm gonna be right back in a second. I'm just gonna add a few things. Just a, just a couple things. Not a lot of change. Everyday average stuff, it'll blend in. She'll, she won't even see it, you know? Okay, that feels much better. Somehow I feel like I'm in a, a safer environment with all these tiny creatures looking over me. I think one of my favorite parts about making crepes is that I get to unceremoniously dump everything into one bowl. In this case, dumping things unceremoniously into a blender. So here are the basic ingredients that you're gonna need. You're gonna need two large eggs, three quarters a cup of milk. You're gonna need half a cup of water, one cup of flour, which is located inside of a jar marked coffee, just to throw people off. Uh, three tablespoons of melted butter. And then you need some kind of butter or oil for actually coating the pan. That's why I have this out here. Then you need a nonstick frying pan. Yes, I'm going to be making crepes in a wok type pan. Just to show you guys that you don't need all the stuff required to make a crepe in something fancy. And I've got things for flipping. So you can either use something like chopsticks to flip it or this ridiculous ginormous spatula that cracks me up that I bought because it looks like a hammerhead shark and is so smart. Cheers. Yep, gone on a couple wine tours uh, this month, I'd say. The wine tour of my kitchen, and the wine tour of the basement. I've had a wine tour in the backyard. Anyone else? So we need three tablespoons of melted butter. I don't think it's like specific to Canada, but I love these butters that come with these little perfectly dotted lines. So all you need to do is uh, cut through this with a knife and you've got measured out perfectly three tablespoons of butter. And I'm gonna pop them into this bowl here and I'm just gonna microwave it uh, just to get it all nice and melty. Canadian fact here, everything is written in English and French if you were wondering what all these different words are because uh, French and English are the two official languages of Canada. So we had to learn it growing up and um, everything is covered in French and English. So if you buy something that's supposed to be Canadian or imported from Canada and you look at at the back or the side of it and you don't see two languages, you don't see English and French, then it is definitely not made in Canada. I always love checking when people sell things like uh, maple cream cookies and I'll go, oh my God, I really miss these. And I pick up the box and I look at it and it's like all in English. And then I look at it and it's imported from like the States or Europe. And I'm like, you're a liar. What the, how long has this been here for? What is this crumble on my face? After you discover that your hand is covered in crumble uh, and you've touched your face in front of everybody that you're about to put on the internet before you cook, make sure you go ahead and wash your hands as though you haven't already washed your hands 8,000 times today because of uh, cold mort. But there is one thing that I think uh, we all know how to do nowadays, that is wash our hands properly, don't forget the nails, and we have a copious amount of hand sanitizers that might be growing in the house like a fungus. seem to find them everywhere along with semi-used crumple masks in cars and hanging from people's mirrors. It's like the new car scent 2020. We're all, we're all coming together on this, right? Nice. Melty butter. 
Ah, oh, that was a lot of work. Jeez, almost ready to assemble. Got the blender all ready to go. Time to take you towards the blender cam. Once we blend all this stuff up, which is only gonna be for like eight to 10 seconds, we don't want the gluten to become too tough by beating the crap out of it using a blender. We're gonna have to let this sit for about an hour, in which case I'll just have to figure out what to do in that time period. To the blender cam, AKA the boob cam. Unceremoniously dump everything into this blender with just the tiniest bit of ceremony, which is gonna be liquid first. So I'm gonna do egg, milk, water, and then I'm gonna add in the flour so that it doesn't get all like lumpy at the bottom. Cause if you put the flour in first, it creates like a coating of powder. Then the water will make it all lumpy. So that's the only thing I'd suggest. So I'm gonna have to switch up my containers to pour this child screaming outside. Can't tell if you can hear that. Before this goes terribly wrong, this is too heavy for me to hold with my um, my wrist that I, I tore because it's still quite sensitive. And I know that before I talked about how we have milk bags in Canada, but my mom doesn't really drink milk. She drinks like almond milk and soy milk. So I've been buying myself just a single container because she doesn't need that much. So I'm just gonna switch out something that's more accessible for me to pour into and I will BRB. You ruined my flow, EDS. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Please notice the French and the English everywhere we go. And yes, we call our over 3% milk um, homo milk. So if you ever see a Canadian say that they really like homo milk, which I do, it's just what it's called. I love me. I love me some homo milk. Mom, if you're watching this, I can explain. You see, in retrospect, I should have used a half cup measuring cup to make one cup, but um, now you have this new art piece, this uh, coffee flower art piece. I think I'm gonna need a little of this. So good eye, I am yet to add the melted butter and that's because since it was warm, I didn't want to pour it on top of the eggs and then scramble them because sometimes that heat would be enough to do that. I'm gonna give this a tiny, tiny little pulse, just like the tiniest little pulse. Then I'm gonna add in the melted butter and then I'm gonna pulse it for like eight to 10 seconds. I'd like to thank Alton Brown for all these tips because he is an amazing food scientist. I've been watching him for forever. It's like one of the first cookbooks actually that I ever got was Alton Brown's Good Eats. Um, but yeah, shout out to big up to Alton Brown. Big ups, as we all say. Hey kids, I'm hip, I'm cool, I'm with it. Yeah. leave this in the fridge to rest for at least an hour and what that's going to do is let the flour molecules absorb the liquid that I've added here and the gluten will get stretchy and make everything come together. Well everybody looks like we're going to be going on an adventure while the crepes are settling into the fridge because I have uh, not Nutella but Muscobio and that's fine but I don't have any bananas and having a Nutella crepe with no bananas is shocking almost. It's one of the most first world problems I've come across in a long time since how upset I was that the internet wasn't that fast in Canada and I was like stressed out at how screens take time to load um, because in Japan and Korea things just load instantaneously. So we're gonna take my first world problem and I'm gonna go get in my first world problem car and I'm gonna drive to the grocery store and I'm gonna buy some freaking bananas. Uh, and then maybe I'll pick up some other stuff too like cheddar cheese and ham so that we can have two different kinds of crepes. 
Okay, totally unrelated to what I'm doing today, but look at all these frickin' pies, you guys. I mean, I have to just resist all this because I love pie. All right, we have a goal. We're heading out to the uh, banana section. Let's go. Okay, I didn't make it very far. Ooh, this is a, this is a journey, you guys. Pecan butter tarts, very Canadian to me. All right, well, these premium bananas look like they were picked before they were even planted. They are so green, so I don't think I can use any of these for my crepes today because they're not even ripe. So maybe I can find something on the discount rack that's kind of like semi-rotten but delicious. So not plantains. We're gonna we're gonna keep hunting. So this is the discount fruit rack, but you can finally get maybe actually ripe bananas here. So even though these look overripe, I can just peel them and freeze them and use them later on if I want to. And I think that this is going to be the way to go because these are going to taste pretty terrible, especially because I'm eating them raw in a crepe. So, wow, this is a, a mighty sack of bananas. A dollar. Okay, I'm thinking I'm going to get this, this old sack of bananas. I'm gonna bring back these guys over there. It's just, just so many bananas. Okay, now that I have a lifetime supply of bananas, I think I'm gonna get some ham, but I'm gonna to go to the deli and get freshly sliced ham. I think I'm gonna get a few slices of the cheddar, and then instead of getting the normal classic Black Forest, I might go for the hardwood smoked ham, which might add a, a nice flavor to it instead. We will see, there's lots of ham to choose from. As I wait for the deli, which is quite busy right now. I don't know if you guys know this, but I worked at not this location, but this deli for like a year. So I, I totally appreciate all the stuff they're doing. It's like major hustle because all the customers want so many different kinds and cuts of meat and everything. And Dimple Myers, which I also used to work for in the bread packing parts. All right, I got Swiss cheese and I got the cheddar cheese and I've got the hams. So this is gonna be a really nice savory crepe. And I got bananas and I think I am good to go. See all these little doodads on the ground here? They've got them all laid out. Right now the store is empty, but every time I come here and it's busy, people will always use them. I'm really proud of Canada, at least, you know, my little neighborhood and stuff. People, I waited in a line before Thanksgiving that went all the way around here, like down to here. You see the little dots? And people literally obeyed the dots. And that's pretty dope. Taking care of each other and taking care of people who are more vulnerable than you, and you, you know? Good job, everyone. Yes, I'm the weird person in the neighborhood who wears cat ears wee, 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 wee. and pink. Where are my cool peeps at? So over here, I've got uh, Swiss cheese, cheddar cheese, and the ham that I got, and I kind of tore it up. I asked her for shaved. This is nowhere close to being shaved ham, might I add. Um, can I please get 100 grams of shaved hardwood smoked ham? If I need to be a little bit picky from someone who worked in the deli, this is a normally sliced piece of ham, which is fine, but it's gonna be more difficult to cut through. I wanted really thin, wafer thin slices that would kind of be fluffy. My cheese, I also asked for her to slice thin, which she did not, only because I want this to melt easily. Then I'm also gonna chop up a little bit of spinach and I'm gonna steam it in my nifty little steam box that I got in Japan. Awesome, just pop it in the microwave, squeeze out the excess water, and then you've got delicious spinach, cheddar, and ham crepe. I mean, what? Then I have opened up a fresh lemon, which I'll be using to squeeze on some crepes with a little bit of sugar, and I'm gonna make a little cinnamon sugar mixture as well. You have to prep before you make your crepes or it'll be chaos. So right here we got the pan that I'm gonna heat up. I have my oil and my oil brush ready to go. My toppings are right over here, so I can easily sprinkle them, roll them, and then pop them inside. Then I've got a container which can close up to put the crepes inside, which allow them to stay warm. I am warming up my nonstick pan. I've brushed it with a little bit of oil, and I set up a little camera up top so you guys can see what I'm gonna do. I started out by putting the temperature on high, and then I'm gonna bring it down to around, around medium. It really depends on your stove. You want it to cook quickly, but not so quickly that the bottom is burning super fast. So there's a lot of fidgeting and moving around dials until you kind of get it right. But generally, it takes like 30 to 45 seconds for it to cook.
keep on swirling. Time keeps on swirling, swirling, swirling into the future. I stop once the swirl can no longer swirl. You want to look for the edges. They're going to start to like get crispy and it's going to be peeling off a little bit. Yeah, looks good. Did I mean to flip that in half? No, I didn't, but that's what just happened. So now I have a flipped in half crepe that I can't open. Um, Hiya. <laughs> Full of recovery. <laughs> Full recovery of the tester crepe. Did it. Tester crepe, what flavor you gonna be? You gonna do some sugar? A little bit of fresh lemon. Ooh, hot stuff. Let's test it out. Hot stuff. Mmm, 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 mmm. Ah, très bien, c'est magnifique. Antonio Oishi. Oishi kata desu ne? Desu ne? real people cook in real life none of this all my food was magically prepped for me in advance no no a couple times it took my eyes off the prize y'all but just like cream I had to rise I had to rise y'all R2G we're gonna need a bigger boat boys we're in trouble hey it would be wasteful and wrong all right Some might argue it might be wrong to look a knife. I'd say, that's not a knife. Okay, it's a knife. Well, a very dull knife. Why did I not put my wrist guard on to do this? I don't know. But I'm just gonna have to go two-handed now, which sounds like some kind of a strange, well, anyways, I'm gonna go two-handed now. <laughs> Gonna need some, gonna need some ice after this on my wrists, but uh, that's okay. Gonna be worth it for this delicious, sweet, sweet crepe magic. I'm eating a crepe like a burrito. You saw it happening. Honestly, the thing about crepes is that it's just basically an excuse to make a sandwich that's super thin because you can put anything in this. Sometimes I put in um, like a fried egg in the morning or if you have a hard boiled egg lying around, you can just chop it up and put it in there. And if you're in a rush and you don't wanna to have to like make each one individually or you're having people over for some kind of gathering, says somebody in the middle of 2020 COVID where no one comes over for gatherings. If you're having a party by yourself, I'm gonna leave the recipe for this inside of the info box. Bon appetit. And uh, let me know if there's any other videos you'd like me to make cooking wise now that I'm back in Canada. Whoa, my arm cannot hold this up any longer. I got to go. Um, my Nutella crepe is getting cold and my mom is gonna smell it and be like, where's my Nutella crepe? And I'll be like, oh, I didn't make two. And then she'll watch the video and go, yeah, you made two. And I'll go, <laughs> what? <laughs>